If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and reread the problem before listening on. Our first step in solving this problem is to find the distance between the two spheres. We're going to call that overall distance r between the two spheres, but the problem does not directly give us that distance. It only gives us this distance here, which the problem has marked as d. So let's take a moment to find the distance between the two spheres. We'll zoom in on the diagram, and what we're going to do is end up finding this distance right here, which we might just call x, which is going to be the same as this distance right here, so that is also x, and then again, the distance between those dashed vertical lines was stated to be d. So hopefully you can see from the diagram that the overall distance between the two spheres, which we have called r, is going to be x plus d plus x, or we could just write that as 2x plus d. Now, we have the value of d, we need to find the value of x. And to do that, we're going to focus our attention on this right triangle outlined here. And we know that the angle is 10 degrees, so we can kind of label that accordingly. And then the length of the string was given as 5 centimeters. And we're trying to find x, so you might want to pause the video, think about which trig function that you would use to solve for x. You could either use the sine, cosine, or tangent, one of which will be the most appropriate. And x is opposite of that 10 degree angle. So we might just want to label that OPP for opposite, and then the 5 centimeter length of rope would serve as the hypotenuse of this right triangle. If that's hard to see, keep in mind that the right angle is right there. So the trig function that involves opposite and hypotenuse is the sine function. We will say that the sine of the 10 degree angle is equal to the opposite, which was x, divided by the hypotenuse of 5 centimeters. Now if we multiply both sides of that equation by 5 centimeters, we would be able to solve for x. So make sure your calculator is set to degree mode, and when you calculate that, you're going to get about 0.868 centimeters. That is the value of x. Now we can come down to the little equation we had created for r. We could plug that value in for x, and then we can also take the value of d, and the question stated d to equal, where are you, d? 3 centimeters right there. So let's go ahead and plug in our data. And a moment ago, I wrote down meters for this length, but it actually should have been centimeters. So my apologies for that confusion. But now we go back, we plug in, and we simplify, and we can see that R is approximately 4.74 centimeters. Now we're going to want to get that into meters, so let's just divide by 100, and we would get 0 0.0474 meters. That is the distance between the two spheres. Now you may ask yourself, why do we need the distance between the two spheres? So to answer that question, let's look at the electric force that's acting between the two spheres. Each sphere has acquired a charge from rubbing the spheres with some fur, and we were told that one charge has twice as much charge as the other. So for instance, let's envision that this sphere here acquired a charge that we might just call Q. And then let's imagine that this charge received twice as much charge, so that would be 2q. Now they have the same sign of charge, so for instance, if they were both positively charged, then they would be repelling one another. And they would be repelling one another with an electric force. So we can draw that electric force on this sphere, and then draw the same magnitude, but oppositely directed electric force on the other sphere. And we've learned in this chapter that we can calculate that electric force via the following equation. This equation is known as Coulomb's Law, and so what we do is we just plug in the magnitude of the charges. So for instance, maybe we can call this one the Q1, and then this charge over here could be the Q2. So that way for Q1, we have just a charge of Q, and then for Q2, we have a charge of 2Q, and then that's going to be divided by the distance between the spheres squared. We could simplify this just a little bit by multiplying the Q by Q to make Q squared, so we would have 2K q squared all over r squared. So that's going to be an expression for our electric force. We'll plug numbers in later on in the problem, but we just wanted to make sure we established that electric force that is acting on the charges. Now what we will do is select one of the charges. We can arbitrarily select this one, and we're going to look at a free body diagram of that charge. We're going to use that diagram to represent the forces acting on that charge. So here is that free body diagram. We have already discussed the electrostatic force that's pushing the charge to the right. But we've included two more forces. We have the downward force of gravity, and then we also have the tension force, which is pulling up on the sphere and preventing it from sort of accelerating downward in free fall. So these are the three forces acting on our sphere. And what we'll do next 
is we'll look at the components of tension. And to do that, we would draw the Y component of tension pointing straight up. We might call that T sub Y. And then we have the X component of tension pointing to the left, which we can call T sub X. And we're gonna use some trigonometry to represent those components. So for instance, if we wanted to find T sub X, we could see that it is opposite of that 10 degree angle. And then the tension T would serve as the hypotenuse of that very skinny right triangle. So now we could say that the sine of that 10 degree angle is equal to opposite, which is T sub X, divided by the hypotenuse, which is T. We multiply both sides by T, and we can see that T sub X is equal to T times the sine of 10 degrees. Now, in a similar manner, we can see that T sub Y is adjacent to the 10 degree angle. So we could say that the cosine of 10 degrees is equal to the adjacent T sub Y over the hypotenuse, which is T. Multiply both sides by T, and now you have T sub Y is equal to T times the cosine of the 10 degree angle. So those components will become necessary because what we're going to do next is we're going to take the sum of the forces in the X direction as well as the sum of the forces in the Y direction, and we're going to set those sums equal to zero. And that's because the sphere is in equilibrium. So we know from Newton's second law that if the sphere is in equilibrium, then the sum of those forces in each direction must equal zero. So again, you might want to pause the video and try to fill in these sums yourself. We can start with the x direction. We can arbitrarily say that to the right is positive and to the left is negative. And then we can see that we have the electric force pointing to the right. And then we would say minus T sub x because the T sub x is pointing to the left. So that's in the negative direction and that would equal zero. For the y direction, we have T sub y pointing straight up. So it's going to be positive. And then the downward is going to be negative, so that mg force would be negative. We would say minus mg, and that's going to equal zero. Now we've developed expressions for t sub x and t sub y. So t sub x was t sine of 10. We'll fill that in. And then t sub y was t cosine of 10. And what's interesting is that in the y direction, we can actually solve for the tension because we have the mass of that sphere. If we go back, to, back up to the question we were told that the masses of each sphere are 15 grams, which is 0.015 kilograms. So we're going to actually isolate tension. Let's add the mg to the right-hand side and then divide both sides by cosine of 10. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and fill in the mass and the value of g. And when we enter that into our calculator, we can see that the tension force is going to be approximately 0.149 newtons. That's pretty swell because now we can take that value for tension and we're going to be able to plug it into our other equation that we developed for the x direction. But perhaps before we do that, let's add T sine of theta to the other side. So now we see the electric force is going to equal T times the sine of 10. We'll go ahead and fill in the tension. And when we do that, the electric force turns out to be approximately 0 0.0259 newtons. Now, how does that help us? Well, remember earlier, we developed an expression for the electric force. It was this expression right here. And we're gonna be able to use that expression to solve for the charge Q. And maybe to do that, we can rearrange the formula just a little bit. So if you multiply both sides of the equation by R squared, you would have R squared times the electrostatic force is equal to 2K times Q squared. We could then divide both sides by 2K and then take the square root. And then we'll go ahead and plug in the known values. Remember, we had found R earlier. We know the electric force, and then K is the Coulomb constant. When you plug that into your calculator, you will find that the charge on this sphere is about 5.69 times 10 to the negative eighth Coulombs. So that was the charge Q. And if we go back to the diagram just to confirm how we had labeled it, we can see that Q somewhere on here. There it is. Q was the charge on the sphere on the right. The other sphere has a charge of 2q. So for the one sphere, we're going to have a charge of 5.69 times 10 to the negative eighth. And if we double that, then we get the charge on the other sphere. So this might be q1. And then for the q2, we double that, we get 1.14 times 10 to the minus seventh coulomb. So those are the correct answers for the charges on each sphere.